quick revision video on amino acids or more specifically alpha amino acids. So what are alpha amino acids? They contain an amine group, so an NH2 group and a carboxylic acid group, COH, bonded to the same carbon atom. So the general formula is RCH, NH2, COOH. So if we represent it like this, it's easier to see the NH2 group, the amino group, and the carboxylic acid group bonded to that same carbon. And this R group here is a variable group. So the simplest alpha amino acid is called glycine, where the R group is just an H. And all alpha amino acids except glycine can show optical isomerism, and that's because they have a chiral carbon. So one thing you could be asked to do is to draw the 3D structures for optical isomers of amino acids. So there are three there. Now just to reassure you, you don't need to know specific amino acids. So you would be told the R group, but you then might be asked to do what we're going to do now. So I've got three for you, valine, lysine and aspartic acid. So the first thing I would do is draw an empty tetrahedron. So that's going to be the chiral carbon and then just put your groups on. And they can be in any order, so I've chosen to put them on like that. So then we'll do the same for lysine and aspartic acid. And then all you do is mirror this on the other side, and so you would see that there. So this is a non-superimposable mirror image of that, and that's why they are isomers, because they're, um, these groups are occupying different spatial arrangements. So there's the next one, and there's the last one. We'll look at reactions of alpha amino acids now. So the first set of reactions are the acid-base reactions. So the NH2 group, the amino group, and you notice I've said group or groups there because sometimes you might have an NH2 group in the R group. So we'll look at both of those. They can react with acids, and basically they're going to accept an H plus from the acid so this will turn into an ammonium ion, so it's going to be NH3+. The carboxylic acid group will react with bases, and that's going to give you a carboxylate ion. And again, you might have a COH group in the R group, and that's why I've got plural there. So the first one we'll look at is valine plus H plus plus acid. So what's going to happen? The H plus is going to be accepted by this group here. And so we're going to get that. If it specifies the acid as say HCl, you would have a Cl minus here as well and you'd get the salt. Another one, lysine and H plus, so lysine and any acid. So if you notice now we've got two NH2 groups, so we've got the the one on the alpha carbon, but we've also got one in the R group. So that means we're going to have two points where the alpha amino acid can react. So we're going to get that. And notice to balance that equation, this two has appeared there. So we'll finish this slide with the reaction between an alpha amino acid and hydroxide ions. So we're going to use aspartic acid. And you can see that there are two COH groups. There's one in the alpha carbon and there's one in the R group. So both of those can react with hydroxide ions and give water, and so we're going to be left with this carboxylate ion. And obviously we'll get two moles of water as well. So the final slide, we're going to look at the reactions of alpha amino acids with alcohols, and that's in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid and heat. And that's going to give us an ester plus water. So the example I'm using is alanine, where the R group is a CH3 group. So I'm reacting that with ethanol and the H plus ions from the acid. So there's the reactants, and here's the product. So I'll just quickly explain those. So you can see we've got an ester group formed, whereby essentially the H here has been replaced by this ethyl group here. So we've got an ethyl ester formed. That's given us a water molecule. So we've got the H and the OH making the water. And something people often forget 
the H plus from the acid um, can join on with the N from the NH2 group and that's going to give us this ammonium ion here.